first Sunday here, uh, I shared with you something that uh, uh, Leonard Sweet did. And of course, when someone says hello, you say hello, right? So let's do that again. Uh, hello, saints. Hello, saints. Hello, sinners. <laughs> All right, here we are together. Uh, I, my uh, favorite apostle, I guess uh, everyone, is the Apostle Paul. And he uh, said, the good that I would do, I do not do. The evil that I would not do, I do, O wretched man that I am. And so we come as those persons that are on a journey toward holiness. Uh, we aren't there yet, but with God's grace, uh, we are one step closer today than we were yesterday, and certainly one step closer tomorrow. For all who are in the room, I'm so grateful to see you. For all of you that are uh, somewhere else and listening through Facebook, thank you. I'm glad that you have chosen to spend this time with us. Uh, a couple of announcements, if I may, please. A reminder that uh, immediately following worship in the fellowship hall, we will have our uh, yearly charge conference, uh, and the uh, agenda for that uh, will be the uh, pastoral point of compensation, the apportionments and uh, district uh, giving, uh, and leadership for the coming year. Uh, of course, all persons are are invited to attend. Uh, however. Uh, if you are a member of the church council, you are strongly encouraged to attend. Uh, we can't do it without you. Uh, any other things that you would share? Anything uh, that you, uh, any good happened in your life this week? Yes. I hope you travel early. Uh, we are early Tuesday. We're early. So, but anyway, we're looking forward to spending it. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for and happy me. Thanksgiving to everyone who's been here. Well, I was not pleasantly surprised that Vince and his lovely wife, Mark, who has been a little bit under the weather, are visiting with us today. I'm Rob. Any others that you share with us? Got one behind you. Yeah, I got a court decision, Chuck. Get uh, my dog a little better. And also, the concern is if you both can use what it may be, coffee drinker, you're going to have to pay a whole lot more for your coffee sometimes. I, I, uh, one of them, you, you wrote down what he said, right? Because I didn't, I didn't hear it. Coffee drinkers going to have to pay more for their coffee. Oh, uh, that's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have a personality with that coffee. Uh, I wake up in the morning and then the first thing is a cup of coffee. Anything else you share with us? Any concerns? Thank you very much, my mother in law. Um, Good support dog. Just received her first chemotherapy treatment. Um, the report is that she's not feeling bad, but I don't think she wants to go out for a softball either. So, um, Lynn is in Oklahoma, in Sewell, Oklahoma, with her, um, helping her. Um, my mother in law is a tough woman. And I think things are going to work out. Well, that's, what, that's the thing. I believe that this is all going to work out. She survived cancer once. She's going to do this again. God's hand and God's grace of healing and God's grace of, of wisdom and understanding will um, will be received and noticed. And I think the only people are going to go down. Any other that you share for Pat? Where is Gloria? Gloria is unwell. Um, she is taking antibiotics, so hopefully she will stop that soon. She's been running a fever, and um, she's just been staying in bed. So we got to keep her for her. Yes. Yeah. Katie Carter is still somewhat under the weather. 
told me this morning about 9.30, and she sounded much better than she did yesterday. She had a little bit of a relapse. She got on so well on Friday, and then by Friday night, it was head cold and coughing and all that stuff again. And this is our reaction to the uh, booster vaccine that we had 10 days ago, actually. And uh, she told me there was going to be a surprise for me at church this morning, and I would know it when I saw it. <laughs> so hello, Vince. And <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. You're a surprise in this world. <laughs> Any others that you share? I uh, I thought about having uh, uh, Kathy uh, play it. Uh, if you don't know it, uh, just join in. Uh, if you do know it, then join in loudly. Um, but there's a song that... Uh, that, that I particularly uh, appreciate, uh, that I'd like to share with you as we uh, kind of move into uh, a worship time. And it's the give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, oh. 
reading comes from the second Samuel, beginning at the 23rd chapter, reading the first seven verses. You will recall last week we began with first Samuel, uh, with the story of Hannah's prayer, and now we come to the end in which we hear how the story of, uh, of Samuel has unfolded. Now, these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed of God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is on my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, Ruling in the fear of God is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all the help and my desire? But the godless are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with a hand. To touch them, one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are continually consumed in the fire on the spot. We have an opportunity every week to come together to worship, but we also have the opportunity to come together to pray. Uh, I, I've asked uh, for the yeah, information there, thank you. We'll, we'll figure out a more graceful way to do this, uh, but uh, with the microphone and with mask and with my hearing uh, and new names, uh, I'm not sure always what is being said, so thank you for uh, letting me uh, have a scribe. Maybe one day I'll be confident enough not to need one, but right now I'm afraid I do. We come together as a community. We're, we're going to stop on Thursday, and we're going to have something called Thanksgiving. We, as a nation, have decided that was a good idea. As a government, we decided it was a good idea, for it's a federal holiday. But for us who are the followers of Jesus, Thanksgiving is not a day, it's not a holiday. It's a way of life. It's a way of, of acknowledging that everything that happens in our life is a gift. And to give thanks for. So we'll begin with a moment of silence in which I would encourage you to pray silently your own prayers of thanksgiving. It won't be long enough to include them all, but we'll list a few perhaps. And then following that, I will offer a prayer of thanksgiving. I will pray prayers of intercession for those we have lifted up and for those that maybe are just in our hearts. And then we will give thanks as we pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. So would you please join me now in a time of prayer, first silently and then together. God, we come as those persons who are grateful. We are entering into a time in which the culture pauses for thanksgiving. But, oh God, we acknowledge that thanksgiving is a part of our lives. Forgive us, oh God, when we have taken for granted the many blessings that come our way. 
forgive us for those times in which we have noticed what is wrong in our lives and have forgotten all the things that are right. Help us, O oh God, to count our blessings. Name them one by one. So we might be amazed and surprised of all that you have done in our lives. We pray especially for the privilege of meeting within these walls of sanctuary. We come as those who have heard you saying, come follow me. We have heard individually that voice, and we have heard it collectively. We are grateful for Florence and Vince, who are back with us in the Assembly of the Faithful. We pray that you would continually remind us that we are blessed with a tie that binds us, tie stronger than words, stronger than ink, rooted in your love and in your spirit. We pray, O oh God, that you would be with Trish Forkiller. We pray that you would be with her as she battles the illness of cancer. Be with those who will minister to her, be they family or friends or persons in the medical profession. May each of them, in their own way, provide a sense of peace and of healing and of hope. We pray that you would be with Gloria, that you would be with Peggy Carter. We are so grateful that Carol is feeling some better after, a, after medicine. We pray that uh, you would continue to be with him. So that mobility and loss of pain would be his. Oh God, we have looked into our own hearts and lives. Now we ask for the vision to look beyond our own needs and look into the world in which we live. Sometimes, oh God, we are divided by things which seem to be different in our world and in our society. Help us, O oh God, to, with a spirit of joy, a spirit of peace and understanding, seek to listen and to understand so that we might find common ground with which and on which to forge a path into the future. And now, O oh God, we pray for this church. As we are in a state of transition, we are in a state of of wondering what the future holds for us. Help us, O oh God, to be reminded that while we do not know what the future holds, we know you hold the future. And so we place our trust, our hope, and our future in you. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, remembering that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Uh, because of uh, the COVID uh, concerns, we are not passing the offering plate uh, down the aisles, but um, uh, we have them here in the front, uh, and we have them at the back. Um, Anthony is going to bring the one at the back uh, up here to me, uh, and we will sing the doxology together, lifting our hearts and our gifts to God.
celebrate Thanksgiving, we ask that you would give us one more thing. Give us glad and generous hearts. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Our gospel lesson, if you would please remain standing, I'm sorry. Our gospel lesson comes from John, the 18th chapter, beginning at the 33rd verse and reading through the 37th verse, and I will add uh, one more verse at the end. Then Pilate and the headquarters again summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this of your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So, you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate asked a question that has been reverberating through the centuries. What is truth? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. God. Our uh, anthem today uh, is uh, We All Are the Choir. So congratulations on your new position in uh, this church. Uh, I promise you, uh, you can sit down if you want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anthony, you can go on to the next. Yeah, there we go. Um, and we will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. Uh, now, this can be an audition. Uh, well, okay. Sing anyway. <laughs> last night in 
my mind. You know how things go through your mind when you're trying to go to sleep? I, I don't know how your mind works, but mine does. And often what I do is when I read or I study, I, I have a moment to just get quiet, uh, to pray, and if you will, to be still and let God be God. And I'm always surprised at what happens. And a song came up. It was, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. It's in our hymnal. And I thought, what a wonderful thing. It's uh, taken from the 23rd Psalm. But just say it with me over and over and over for a few times. The King of Love, My, my shepherd, shepherd Is. The King, King of Love, love my, my Shepherd, shepherd is. is. The King, King of Love, My, my Shepherd Is. is. The King of love, my shepherd is. Let's pray. Oh God, we are so grateful. We are so grateful for your word, which lightens our path. Your spirit, which illuminates our heart. And the opportunity to live into both in this moment. I want to kind of paint a picture for you. It is early in the morning. How early? We really don't know, but, but it can't be earlier than 6 o'clock in the morning. And my suspicion is it's not much later. Because Jesus has been up all night. You know how the story goes. He has a meal with his disciples. He leaves and goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, which uh, it's just really across the brook Kidron from Jerusalem. If you will, the, the, the Jerusalem is up on a hill, and then there's a slope that goes down and to the brook Kidron. There's the Garden of Gethsemane there, and then you, you go back up another hill, and, and that takes you to Bethany. So all of it is right there. And so Jesus is there with his disciples the night before he has the last meal in Jerusalem. He comes out. He goes down across the book, Brook Kedron, and there he is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And you know how it goes. While he is there, Judas comes and betrays him with a kiss. Has to get so close because it is dark to make sure that he identifies him correctly. Jesus spends the rest of the night in interrogation and in a mock trial. At first light, if you will, at 6 o'clock, I'm confident, while the scripture doesn't tell us, Jesus is hauled before the authorities. He goes to Herod, and now he goes to Pilate. And that's where we find the story. In my mind's eye, Pilate comes in, wondering what's going on. He's rubbing his eyes because... He's just been awakened. There he is. He, he has on his, his pilot attire. He has on his, his robe. He has on some kind of headdress that would identify him as one of authority and one in authority. He is there with Jesus, and Jesus is brought in. He's brought in, and, and these double big doors open and in shuffles this Jesus. His head is down. His hair is wet with perspiration. His face is bruised and dirty. His clothes look like he has been drugged through the street. His knees, feet are skint. And he stands there. It is a striking scene. Pilate, marble everywhere, marble on the floor, a marble bust of Caesar, one of Pilate, and there he stands as one with power. And we hear the story. So you're the king, you're king. And Jesus says, do you say this of yourself, or has someone told you this? Am I a Jew? Uh, why, why, why do I know of you? All of a sudden, 
backtracking. You see, Pilate has power, but not a lot of authority. Pilate is there through the behest of Rome. His job is to make sure that little backwater place doesn't blow up. He's there to make sure that Rome doesn't have any problem with those Jewish folks. Now you know what happens. In a few years later, in 70 AD, Rome comes in and obliterates Jerusalem. You know the story of Masada, where they march all the way and they destroy the people there holding up in Masada. So this is what's going on. There's tension. There's been tension since when the Greeks were there in the 4th century. And Judas Maccabeus threw them out. And, and people thought that this Jesus was going to be that kind of leader, that kind of king, that kind of restorer of David's dynasty. But it didn't work out that way. And so now we have this Jesus looking the way he looks, like a street urchin standing next to Pilate. Pilate stands stall, tall, regal. Guards stand by those big wooden doors. They have their swords. They have their headgear. They have their shiny armor. Pilate stands there in the gown of a king ruler, a monarch. And there is Jesus. There is Jesus. My kingdom is not of this world, Jesus says. And Pilate says, so you are a king. And so the question for us today is, Uh, there's a wonderful article that I, uh, I looked back up. It's written by Max Weber. It's from the Christian Century in June 2016. Uh, he, he talks about the difference in power and authority. And I think it's wonderful. Uh, power and authority. This is what he says. He said power has a coercive element. Fear is involved with power. The boss, the guy that can hire or fire you, or the woman who can hire or and fire you, 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 you are obedient not because you want to be obedient, because you're afraid not to be obedient. My, my first job uh, at a high school uh, there was going to be a, a, an interim job until I turned 18. I graduated high school at 17. Uh, and so uh, my parents and many of my other family members uh, had worked in the cotton mills in eastern North Carolina. And so that was a logical choice for me. Uh, a lot of my family did that. My grandfather did it. Uh, my father, my mother, my aunts, uncles, cousins. Well, that's just the way it was. We... You, you maybe are familiar with that kind of lifestyle. And, and so I got a job in the cotton mill, and I got a job. I was going to be uh, on the third shift whenever I got old enough, but at 17, you had to work the first shift. And so this is how hard my job was. A guy that dropped out of the third grade taught me my job in 15 minutes. Not a hard job. It involves sweeping the floor, emptying the trash cans, making sure the spinners had something called roving so that they could make the yarn. Uh, again, not a hard job, but I wanted that job, and so I wanted to do a good job. They told me what I was supposed to do. 
But you know how you are when you're 17 and you don't have a job that really that demanding? I, I, when I went to the third shift particularly, I, I, Archie was the supervisor. He was the overseer. Uh, Archie, uh, Archie, I don't know how he was all the time, but if you could make it to 3 o'clock in the morning, you had it made. Because Archie had a secret stash somewhere in his office. They said it was ammonia and coke. I don't know if it was ammonia and coke or not, but it was something in coke. <laughs> but I'll tell you how I did with Archie. I learned when Archie was going to make his rounds. You ever been a job like that? You know when the boss is going to be around, right? And when the boss is going to be around, what happens then? I am, I am ship shape. I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Now when the boss goes by, it might be time to <clears throat> take a break. That is an overseer. That is power. He can hire you. He can fire you. That's the kind of king that sometimes people think is a good king. But Max Weber said that, that authority is different. Authority has no coercive element. We are obedient because we want to be. We are compliant. We do our job, if you will, because we know we are loved. Jesus' authority, Max Weber says, came through love. Not to do what he commands. Instead, we want to live the life he proposes. Did you hear that? Not to do what this king commands, but to live a life he proposes. Max Weber goes on in the Christian century to say, in Mark 1.28, he cast out an unclean spirit, and the people say, what is this? A new teaching with authority? What they saw was more than raw power. They witnessed the power of love. And that love is the secret to the Lord's authority. The king of love, my shepherd hears. Paul wrote in Philippians 2, beginning the fifth verse, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard Equality with God is something to be exploited, or as the other translation said, although being in the form of God, he did not uh, account uh, equality with God to be something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, a servant, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and has given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So what gave Jesus this authority? What gave Jesus this right, if you will, to ascend to the throne? Was it his raw power? As they used to say, God is all-powerful. If he's all-powerful, 
Could he pick up a rock so, create a rock so big he couldn't pick it up? That's, first of all, it's a stupid question, but, but also it's to miss the point. Power is not power when it is abused. That's what bullies do. Power is power when it springs out of a place of love, authority. Authority. I am. Uh, <laughs> I travel. I travel the road, um, and and. Um, I have blue light syndrome. Anybody else have blue light syndrome? <laughs> All right. Okay. We know where we're going, right? Okay. I was coming over to, I'm, I'm adding this to the sermon. This was not written on when I was at my set. I'm coming over Franklin Mountain. Okay, Franklin Mountain, you know how it goes. You go up, you start down, and sometimes, I'm just saying sometimes, my car, it misbehaves. <laughs> It's not that I misbehave, it's my car. It will go faster than that little sign says it's supposed to. Well, there was this truck from Florida that passed me, and I took it personally. I thought, I'm going to stay up with it. Well, I, I was judging the appropriate speed based upon that truck that was in front of me. Thank goodness there was another car that wanted to be in front of the truck from Florida. And so he goes around us very quickly. Later, I see the taillights of the truck from Florida come on. So I slow down. And then I see the blue lights. <laughs> from the truck that passed us. Okay, confession time. How many in here will drive the speed limit more because it's the right thing to do or you're afraid you're going to get caught? I'm, I'm number two myself. Okay? <laughs> I'm number two. That's power. I'm afraid something bad's going to happen to me if I don't toe the line. But I have other relationships, and I know you do too, that we do the right thing because we're loved. And that's the way it is with Jesus. That's the way it is with his King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He has power, of course. He is all powerful. But he is also all love. So, there was a story that played out. In um, Pilate, of course, you know what happened. Pilate gave in to political expediency and he handed Jesus over. The clinching line was when the crowd says, we have no king but Caesar. And so Jesus carries the cross. He goes up the hill is there. And this is the way I see it in my mind's eye. He's laying there and usually what happens is the Roman guards take a, a hand, hands that are held like so with the one who's going to be crucified and they pull them apart and they hold them down one to the other not what happened that day. What happened that day? You see, laid on the cross, in my mind's eye, they 
facing heaven, he opened his arms. That's the kind of king he is. A king that would literally rather die than live without you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Sisters and brothers, King of love, our shepherd is. Would you stand as we sing our closing? Oh! Well, you'll get old one day, too. Yeah, we have the Apostles' Creed. Thank you. Uh, let us unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick of the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, would you please join me with 715? unto you. May the Lord lift up his very countenance to you and give you peace. Not as the world gives for sisters and brothers. That is a here today and gone tomorrow kind of peace, but as Christ alone can give in this time and in the time to come. Go to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do, for you are sent in the name and the power and the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah.